Would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. But an interesting thing actually happened was during the making of that, um, that show because although I'd written it to be in Paris, I was the only member of the, uh, of the team who didn't get to go to Paris. I was rather upset about this. So I was sitting in my office at the BBC, um, <laughs> feeling a little miffed as everybody else was gallivanting off in Paris and I was sitting there by myself. And this wild Scottish ex-hippie came into the office and said, where is everybody? Um, and I said, they're in Paris. And he said, well, I need to talk to the producer. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, you know, I'm directing the next show, uh, the, the Dalek story. And uh, there's some problems I really want to talk about. Now, this is Ken Grieve, um, who is one of the world's most stupendous and marvelous piss artists. Um, and um, anyway, I said, well, we can't talk to them, and they're in Paris. And he said, um, and you're here all by yourself? And I said, um, yes. <coughs> Rather bitterly, I said it, actually. And uh, he said, well, look, why don't, why, don't, why don't we go? Why don't we go to Paris? And I said, no, don't be stupid. So we got our passports and made off down to the airport, leapt on a plane, and uh, got into Paris, arrived at the hotel we knew they were staying at. And um, they were all sitting there at the end of a hard day's filming and all looking particularly tired and shagged out other than Tom who was eyeing Lala. Um, and um, so we said, um, hey, hi, bet you're surprised and pleased to see us. And of course they weren't. <laughs> um, so we said, um, well, look, let's um, go out and have fun. And they all looked at us said, we've had a hard day, you go out and have fun. And um, so at that point, Ken and I sort of looked at each other. And gradually the realization dawned on us that if we'd really planned this trip at all, um, well, A, we wouldn't have made it. <laughs> and uh, B, we would probably have brought somebody rather the prettier than the other person with each of us, if you see what I mean. Uh, but anyway, we thought we'd better make the best of a bad job and uh, went off into the night and found a restaurant and sat and had a nice meal and drank quite a lot of wine. And uh, I was stuck for something else to do. So I went to a bar and stayed there uh, drinking uh, until the bar closed and they threw us out. Um, so we thought, what should we do now? And we found another bar that was open and we went there. And we stayed there until it closed and they threw us out. So we went to another bar and uh, sat there and drank for a while until it closed and it throws out. This got us till pretty late at night and uh, we were in the Montmartre district and we couldn't find another bar that was open at that point and Ken said look I do know for sure of one bar that is definitely open. Do you want to go? I said yes. Where is it? He said it's in West Berlin. So we went and found <laughs> the airport. Unfortunately, well, I suppose fortunately, there were no imminent flights to West Berlin. I mean, the next one was sort of early, you know, it was, was next morning. And we really wanted to drink then. Um, so eventually we did discover another, um, another bar that was open. And we went there and then another one. And we kept going till about five in the morning. Whereupon um, it became apparent to me that Ken was a little drunk at this point. It became apparent to me because whenever I managed to find him, which is quite tricky, because I mean he was at least three feet away. Um, he seemed to be doing something which I couldn't understand, <laughs> and uh, or saying things I didn't understand, or that the French people understood either. Uh, so eventually we, we we called a cab, and um, I got Ken into the into the cab, and we arrived at the airport. I got out of the cab, and Ken uh, fell out of the cab. Um, actually cut his face open rather badly, uh, just by the eye. And um, so we had to take him to the, uh, the doctor uh, at the airport who stitched him up. Well, uh, put those sort of plastic stitches, you know, which go over it on. And got on the um, airplane. And I must say, British Caledonian were wonderfully polite and wonderfully um, forgiving and sympathetic. Uh, because there was a lot to forgive and a great deal to be sympathetic about. <laughs> And um, so we arrived back at Television Centre at 9 o'clock in the morning, feeling a little the worse for wear. 
and Ken, who was actually further gone than I think I've ever seen anybody go, um, discovered he, he had to go and sit in a basement and watch six, six episodes of um, Doctor Who and the Genesis of the Daleks, which he wasn't quite certain if he could face, but he went off to do it bravely. Anyway, and I, I spent the morning in the office. Um, I didn't go immediately home to bed as I wanted to because there was an important thing I had to say. Um, which was this, I went up to the bar at lunchtime because I knew there would be somebody there whom I had seen the previous day um, and that um, they would ask me what sort of evening I'd had and I wanted to be able to tell them and eventually somebody said, oh hello, hi, how are you? Um, and I said fine and they said, um, do anything interesting last night? and um, I said, oh, but, you know it was one of those kind of nights when at four o'clock in the morning you wonder how on earth you're going to get back to England. 